Welcome back friends. We have just talked about the first stage of motility of food in our mouth which is called chewing. Now in this video we will be talking about the second part of the motility and that is brought about in esophagus. So let us talk about the esophageal motility of food. Now once the food is chewed it is mixed with saliva different uh, small enzymes that are being secreted by our uh, from our mouth and that saliva contains some enzymes like alpha amylase or beta alpha amylase most of the time and then they produce what is called we a bolus right so bolus is made in mouth then what we do we need to push this bolus towards the latter part of our digestive tract and that is called the esophagus right so let us talk about how this food moves through the esophagus now during this part this is very very important because this is the area where our esophagus and also some uh, our, our trachea both of them are lined in the kind of similar way and and the entrance for all of them is kind of one because you, if you if you see here the entrance for all of them is kind of mixed at a particular region because air is coming from our nasal passage food is going from our mouth but both of them are kind of mixed at a particular point right now there is a very important part that when we eat food we must close our nasal passage as well as we must close our tracheal passes both of them because if any food particle enters the, this tracheal pass passage it can block our respiration and it can eventually kill us so that is a very important stage because our body need to maintain a perfect balance to prevent the food to enter inside our nasal passage as well as inside our tracheal passage so how it does so we'll be talking about it so in this case if i draw uh, the structure say let me uh, say say the, if this is the chamber for food let's say here like that so here it will go and at the end here will be like say the stomach for example okay now if this is the channel and if i draw the channel for trachea it will look something like that it will look say from this direction actually but kind of okay so it's a kind of it no, let the trachea like that. Okay, so it will look something like this. Okay, it will look something like that if I draw the structures. So it's a nasal passage, and this is the oral passage. Both of the passages are aligned there. Okay, now what we can see here. There are two important constriction. I should draw constriction also here. Two important constriction sites. One constriction is here. Another is here. So this is first constriction. This is the second constriction. We'll be talking about this constriction later. But this is a kind of. It's a very bad drawing, but it's a kind of explain everything. So what what actually cause in this case when we take the food from mouth and our tongue is helping the food to move and push it backward so that it can push through the esophagus and this this channel is the esophageal channel right so this is esophagus and here this is the trachea okay this is the two different regions now what we know is that food is being pushed so bolus is pushed here through this oral segment now let's say the bolus is here for example let's say the bolus is now here it is being continuously pushed backward so the bolus will move as the bolus will move this there are two valves as you can see here two valves important valves this one and this one so this and this now this small valve is called glottis which is present at the junction of our tracheal region and our esophageal opening. Another uh, valve is there, which is slightly upper region of the glottis, is called epiglottis. 
these are two very important valves to control the food during the movement from esophagus from our mouth to the esophagus so what happens actually bolus will migrate it will move as the pressure is moving on it will move now during this movement which which machinery help in this movement because remember in case of mouth we've seen the motility as chewing but in case of this esophageal movement the important step for the motility is it is so in case of esophagus the motility part is peristalsis so peristalsis start to occur from here and peristalsis will keep on occurring at this stomach level so peristalsis means it's a it's an action of continuous muscle, muscle contraction and relaxation so muscles of this esophageal wall start to contract and relax contract and relax contract and relax and as they are contracting and relaxing they are kind of pushing the bolus for backwards pushing the bolus actually downwards toward this uh, stomach okay so this is a part so as and i shouldn't draw it like as i should should have draw it like this okay so as this food is kind of moving and continuously construction and con constriction and relaxation is going on and food is keeping uh, food is, food keeps moving forward now during this process peristalsis is occurring in full force and food is forced to move now during this time when the food come at the very close to the junction uh, you can see here this is a very important side this very important point because you can see here both this thing this black colored region is our esophageal part digestive system part this blue colored region is our respiratory system part tracheal wall so there is there is a one single opening from that branch two different path is coming but the place is kind of open so there is a chance of food particle to insert inside the tracheal region but we need to prevent it to prevent that the major two players are glottis and epiglottis now when the food reaches at this particular point of the junction it it creates a pressure and peristalsis is going on it is telling our brain our central nervous system that yes the food is coming now you need to close this glottis and this glottis first closed the glottis is closed and as the glottis closes up it can it, it eventually blocks the tracheal system so glottis we gets closed here glottis is closing the tracheal path once it is closing and it is blocked the tra it, it blocked the tracheal path then the second part is that food is continuously moving and as the food is moving until at this point and the food is moving so try to follow this point at the food or bolus is moving it is creating pressure on the epiglottis because epiglottis is a valve like that and food is moving like it and it it pushes it keep pushing epiglottis and the epiglottis kind of folds because it's a kind of flexible part so it it kind of folds and kind of block this particular section so previously it was like that but now after folding it becomes like this it kind of folds so it is getting folded so it is getting folded so now once the pressure of the bolus is hitting to the epiglottis is kind of folding it is it is further blocking the glottis so there is no way of entering any food particle inside our tracheal region by by doing this method and then the bolus keep on moving now during the movement of the bolus there are first constriction here which is which is called the sphincter constriction upper respiratory uh, after upper esophageal sphincter or ues it is called as upper esophageal sphincter or ues and this one is called lower esophageal sphincter or les which is present and very near to the uh, stomach but this first upper esophageal sphincter kind of constricted region but as the bolus is moving and uh, peristalsis is going on it is keeping it forward and the food bolus start to move migrate through the portion it will migrate downward towards the stomach okay so the major part here is peristalsis and then the peristalsis and also the major important part is the closing of tracheal region before swallowing the food okay so this is all of the part but during this part of swallowing swallowing food this is uh, our our uh, reflex is kind of working central nervous system is kind of working in all this case okay so that's kind of it and i hope that's helpful